so Chumley the gnome and uh, Meepo the um, kobold are still in the Sunless Citadel looking for a missing dragon. Now I want to deviate a lot from the uh, adventure which is here and I find I seem to work best with things like dice. Um, some people work well with um, rolling on charts, uh, random charts, but um, I find it often um, sort of derails and frustrates me. <laughs> so I like something a bit, little bit more open-ended, like Roy's Story Cube, which I use all the time. But, um, you know, you can only be so apologetic because they're quite good. I'm going to try the um, Fantasia set, which I don't really use very often. Try and discover how the next part of our adventure, as they find and hopefully rescue the dragon, will play out. So let's have a look. So looking at what we've got here, the Kobold Queen, or leader, has sent us on this mission. So that sort of fits there. We are assuming that the dragon is being held captive by some goblins. Uh, it's only a young dragon. It responds to music. If music is played, it becomes passive. Um, maybe some treasure. Wishing. Hmm. Poseidon, oceans. Um, some kind of missile weapon. And not sure about this. Somebody's belongings. Um, something that matters to someone who hasn't got a great deal. Yeah. Wishing an allowed treasure chest of some kind. Well, the noise could relate to the music, maybe. Hmm. I'll have a think about that. So this um, seems to me a bit like what Meepo might say to Chumley in that, um, yes, the Kobold Queen has sent Chumley and Meepo on a mission to rescue the dragon, which is a young dragon, uh, which is being held prisoner by the um, goblins, as it uh, appears in the adventure. Um, the dragon responds to music. Um, but Meepo wishes that he and the dragon could just leave the um, this uh, world of um, kobolds fighting goblins and you know striving for status against each other and just uh, live happily out on their own. That's his uh, wish. And. Um, Obviously the dragon has powerful elemental um, forces behind it because it can breathe whatever it can breathe. I can't remember. I think it's a white dragon. I can't, can't remember offhand. But um, the bow and arrows, yeah, I'm not sure. So that's most of the uh, dice accounted for anyway. So as um, Chumley and Meepo explore further into the deeper parts of the dungeon, which are not inhabited by the kobolds, um, let us do a bit of micro chapbook RPG work and generate ourselves the first room they come to with how many squares big it is. That is seven squares big. Like that. And in for a penny, in for a pound. How many rooms has it got? Let's do a D3, just like micro chat book. And it has one door. Um, I can't remember what I just said there. How many rooms does it have? How many doors does it have? It's got one door. And if we use the... Hmm, are there any creatures in here? Let's use my um, ridiculous uh, oracle. Negative things, bad stuff. Positive things, good stuff. 
Are there any potentially dangerous creatures? Ooh. Possibly. That's a sort of even result. So let's have a think about that. So I'll use one of my ridiculous dice and say, is it going to be inhabited by a creature that we can't reason with? Impossible. So it's something we can reason with and possibly uh, negotiate with. So let's roll for a, a d12 level 1 dungeon encounter and see what we get. That's a 10. That's a s You see why I don't like charts? That's a giant spider crab. We can't reason with that, or can we? Hmm. Well, even in the case of a a giant spider here. Um, maybe Chumley can throw some rations to it and uh, see if it's distracted. It might even be helpful. <laughs> we'll see. Um, that's a six, which is higher than the negative five. So let's say it's distracted long enough for Chumley and Meepo to get past it. I'm going to roll three dice this room this time because uh, that last room was quite small. So 10, 12, that's, uh, that's decent. So. And the D3 to see how many doors there are, just like micro chat book. And there are three doors. Hmm. And will there be a creature that... Um, will there be a creature at all? <laughs> That's a six. Yes, there definitely is a creature. And are we able to reason with it? Is it possible? Highly unlikely. That's not good. So we're already thinking negatively. I shall bring up my homemade die, um, which I have to keep going over because permanent ink pens aren't as permanent as you might like. So let's get a let's get a rough guide maybe. It's unhappy. Not immediately aggressive, perhaps, but unhappy. So let's roll on our Dungeon Encounters level one, which is a four, and that's a, a kobold. OK, that presents an interesting problem. Now, as we are on a mission for the kobold queen, and as Meepo is with us, who is the um, or was the uh, dragon um, looker after her? Why does this kobold have a beef with us? Why is he unhappy? Because Meepo will clearly be able to say, hey look, we're on a mission for the Queen. Um, does he have a personal problem with Meepo? That's what comes to mind. So I'm going to roll my ridiculous die. And if you're interested, I got all of these ridiculous dice from uh, the um, dice shop online who do ship to the US and um, uh, Chuck ordered um, some from the uh, dice shop online and he says they arrive very quickly and he's in the US so great stuff lovely crazy dice I mean all my most ridiculous dice including these are from the dice shop online and even this mad one as well so uh, any dice you want <laughs> available there. So let's see if this gives us any clue. I'm not sponsored, by the way. When? Oh gosh, we've got when again. Let's have a think. When were you given the right to be the Dragon Master? When When did you deserve that office? Perhaps you're just jealous. Perhaps you're just a, a jealous childhood enemy of Meepo. And he's just got it in for him. And uh, he, he he knew about 
Meepo and uh, Chumley setting off. And he says to uh, have it out with Meepo. And he just lost his temper. It's like, what makes you so special? Why were you allowed to look after the dragon? And you couldn't even do that right. So, how are we going to handle this? I mean, from our last episode, way back when, it seems like Meepo is a... He's a sensitive, thoughtful kobold, and he wouldn't just say, Hey Chumley, my new mate, let's cut this guy down. He'd want to understand why, where, the, where the guy's coming from and say, Look, there, there are bigger things at stake here than our issues, so um, why don't we put these problems aside? And uh, me and me and Chumley have got a mission to do, and you know, we've got to fix everything, so. Um, just let us go on, get on with the job. Um, his charisma is nine, uh, Meepos, so um, I don't know. Let's roll on our uh, funny little dice again. Obviously, with Meepo having a charisma of nine, we have no modifier, so um, I'm not sure how you'd work out a modifier on this, but anyway, he has possibly been placated by Meepo's uh, spiel. He's not aggressive, he's not happy, he's not unhappy. He's sort of thinking, mm, I suppose, I suppose you're right. So, this character here, we shall call him Quill, he will let us past. And he will, for the moment, put aside his issues of long, long standing with uh, Meepo. Now, um, let us try one of the doors. Perhaps we could ask Quill what he thinks, um, where he thinks the goblins might be. Um, do we think, with our ridiculous oracle, he might be helpful and point us in the right direction? Oops. Yes, we do. We've got two fours and one, one <laughs> on the negative die. So he will point us in the right direction towards where the goblins are holding um, the uh, dragon. So I'm going to roll roll this, uh, another ridiculous die. Uh, north, straight ahead. So that's where he's pointing us. Hey, let's push our luck. Will he help us in trying to rescue the dragon? No, <laughs> no, you're right. I've got better things to do, mate. So we move on. So how many goblins? of which I have 10, are going to be guarding this dragon. Oh, for crying out loud, it would be... Yeah. This is going to take some cunning plan. Chumley and Meepo have seen the uh, amount of aggro that awaits them, albeit small, but they are also small. So, what Chumley is going to do he is going to say to Meepo, hide here, stay out of sight, my new friend. I will distract the goblins, enabling you to rescue the dragon. Jumli is reasoning that um, his new friend Meepo has built up a relationship with him and uh, that he can trust him uh, over these few little encounters and such and their initial meeting, and he will trust that if Meepo is able to get the dragon free, um, he will take him back to the Queen. The Queen will send reinforcements to try and rescue Chumley, and hopefully the goblins won't have killed Chumley in the meantime. So that is what he's going to do. Meepo will hide. Now, as... Um, <laughs> well, yeah, he's not wise, he's not intelligent, but he's going to do it anyway. Chumley will ask Meepo to beat him up a bit, rough him up, make it look like he's escaped from some kobolds. And um, Chumley will probably end up doing most of that himself, because uh, Meepo is devoted to his new friend. So 
Chumley looks like he's been roughed up by the kobolds and that he's escaped. Uh, he will even give Meepo his weapon so that it looks like he's literally escaped with barely anything. And as Meepo makes his way back, Chumley will stagger in and the goblins will go, what the hell? And um, Chumley will say, the, the, the kobolds, they captured me. They're going to attack you. They're, going to, they're launching a massive attack. I must see your leader immediately. I must warn him. I must warn him that he's going to be attacked. It's going to be terrible. They've, they've got a, um, trolls and ogres. They're, they've, they've forged alliances with giant creatures. They're going to start storming in. I need to tell your leader immediately. Now. <laughs> Are oh, the goblins going to fall for this? And, um, you know, knowing that goblins are not hugely intelligent, are they going to go running off to their leader to be um, uh, praised for taking the warning to whoever that might be? Oh, no. The red die is always the negative die. The goblins are really not convinced. That makes life really difficult. So I'm going to roll the Goblins initiative in number order. I'm going to roll for Chumley and Meepo, who will be red. Number one goes four. Two goes three. Three goes four. Four goes one. So goblins can move twenty feet when they are armoured per round. Uh, we are on the fastest of people, so these guys will move, rushing to uh, attack their enemies. Each square being. 10 feet, we assume. Um, and Chumley and Meepo also move on initiative 6. They are going to... Well, Meepo hadn't gone away, so... Oh, what's he thinking? Well, that's happened. That's move 6. Um, he's on move five, move four. This guy on move four will attack. And this guy, one, two, is just not close enough. This guy is close enough. Wow. So Chumley gets plus four total to hit. The goblin armor class of 14. And he misses. Chum, uh, Meepo gets a plus three in total. That's more like it. He hits that guy. Uh, what weapon does he have? I can't remember. It's been a while. 1d6 plus one. Short sword. Six damage to Goblin three. Oh, yes. He's defeated. However, Goblin 3 would also, he would not actually have gone on uh, Initiative 6, so that's fine. He did take him out. All the Goblins in attack here are on Initiative 4, so that's okay. The only guys in combat range, well, the only guy in combat range is here, because we are in the doorway, proper hero quest style. So he will roll. He won't get a bonus but the die will knock. Yeah, let's try that again. Uh, 13 uh, against Chumley is not going to do it. So why not get full basic fantasy and uh, re-roll initiative at the beginning of every round. Goblin 1 has a 1. Goblin 2 
as a one. Goblin four, because there is no goblin three anymore. Um, where is goblin four? There he is. What's he doing over there? Um, and all the other bally goblins. <laughs> so we did quite well there, because nobody else got a six but Chumley. So he's going to say to um, Meepo, get the dragon free. And he will engage with this goblin here with his plus four attack. That's rubbish. So he messes. But um, on our fives, this guy moves in to a yard. And the fours, Meepo will um, check Meepo's movement. Okay, Meepo will move 20 feet. Let's try and get around the goblins. Uh, all the fours, he'll move here. Threes, he will attack. He will move in behind here. This four will come in. That goblin attacks and hits. He rolls 1d6 plus... Actually, minus one, isn't it? So he hits with a three. Now that's a full three. Chumley takes all those hits. And uh, the two, I don't know, will he be focused on, will he be focused on Chumley? It's likely that he'll be focused on Chumley, so he won't, he won't go for Meepo, which is fine. And all these ones are not within range of anybody to... Uh, Attack, so okay, we're still in the game. Okay, that didn't go so well. Number six, um, well, he was on six, he has moved in. Um, number five will move in to Chumley, who has caused all the trouble initially. Um, we have this number four will move in initiative for I should say. Will this guy go for Chumley? No he won't, he'll go for Meepo. Head towards Meepo. And what about this guy, will he go for Chumley? Yeah he probably will. He'll probably move in on Chumley and he'll probably get a hit. Um, so this guy will roll, no he's not quite in range, but um, this guy will attack Chumley and miss. So, uh, number three will also attack Chumley, initiative three. He will miss. This guy is just the wrong side of the door. This guy will move in. Chumley is not engaged with this guy yet, so he can move off up here because he's got a mission and this guy is here. Chumley, I should say, before before that number one guy went, can attack with his plus four. Uh, that is a hit. His mace does d8 plus two, that's a three, which almost, almost finishes off this guy, but not quite. Okay, so we've got some fives, but no sixes. So this guy is still... Chumley is in the doorway, so he can't attack him. Um, this guy, is he going to go for Chumley? Ooh, that's evens. Oh. He's right next to him. I mean... When it comes down to, you know, um, yeah, common sense, he's, he's going to attack uh, Meepo, isn't he? And he's going to miss, I think. Yes, so that's okay, but he is engaged now, Meepo. 
So the other fives are not able to attack. And now do they, any of these, does this guy, um, is he concentrated on Chumley? No, he's going to go for Meepo. One, two, he's going to attack. Oh, that's just a hit. Yeah, that is a hit. So he rolls 1d6 damage on Meepo and of course scores 2. So now we've got the 4s, which is Meepo. He will turn to face his attacker here on the right. Um, 12, 13, 14, 15, that's a hit. Meepo has a short sword, 1d6 plus 1. Um, that's not quite enough. Meepo, why do you always just do not quite enough damage? Okay, that's Meepo done. This guy is close enough to attack Chumley. Keep things simple. He hits, sadly, and does one damage to uh, Chumley. And these other two guys can't quite get to him. So, another round of crazy basic fantasy initiative. Okay, this is really bad. I mean, this guy is directly in front of Chumney. He... does he hit? Chumney's arm class is 15. He does hit. It was a d6 and he scores four points of damage. Oh no, we're not going to have a TPK, are we? This guy's going to obviously move in on a five. Oops. I'll deal with this. Six go in a minute. Um, he is going to attack. Twelve, he misses. This guy, yeah, he's going to go for Meepo, isn't he? He's going to miss as he attacks Meepo. Four can't get in. Three can't quite get in. He's just in the doorway. Two, we've got. Let's do Chumley first. Give him, give him a break. <laughs> He'll attack. Um, let's look who's wounded. He'll attack the guy in front of him, and he'll miss like a muppet. No, that's bang on. That's bang on fourteen with his plus four. So his um, weapon is a D eight plus two, and this guy's gone. Well, that's something at least. This guy. Number two can't get in, number two here can't get in. These two number ones um, will act simultaneously. Meepo will attack number ten and he'll miss badly. And number ten will hit Meepo for one damage. Couldn't have gone much worse. Um, <laughs> six moves in, attacks Chumley, misses. Um, no fives, we've got loads of fours. They are not really in the fight, apart from this guy who will attack Meepo. And 13 will not hit Meepo's armor class, which is quite good. This guy will also attack Meepo and hit big time, scoring three points of damage. This guy, number six, will attack Chumley and hit... Oh, Chumley's down. Chumley is so down. Okay, I am now going to look at the rules on attacks of opportunity. So, all these ones who are rallied around Chumley here. Chumley, sorry, Meepo, <laughs> is gonna leg it. Now uh, he's engaged with both these guys. They go both get. I guess they both get a plus four attack of opportunity, which is not ideal. Oh gosh, that's a hit. Uh, Twelve, no. One hit to uh, Meepo, who suffers five damage. Oh, we're going to die. But um, that should be a four. So we run 10, 20. Oh gosh, right, okay. 
is there a chance of a deus ex machina? Certain. You all saw it. The dragon breaks free? Having seen Meepo go down, both of our heroes are obviously well out of it. And the dragon takes its retribution on the goblins. Whether that means our heroes survive or not is um, up in the air right now. But that's what happens when uh, you let the <laughs> let the dice work the magic. So um, on that note, um, that was that. Thank you, colleagues, for joining us again for the adventures of uh, Chumli and Meepo. And I'll see you soon.